Welcome um, to the series uh, Recipes for Resilience. And uh, today um, uh, the topic is um, we're going to talk about trauma and healing and, and, and especially grief, trauma and healing. And uh, I am Paulina Mapata. I'm a positive intelligence coach and I am passionate about uh, supporting, inspiring and uh, challenging individuals in change, transformation and wellness. And today I have uh, my guest is a fellow mom, a fellow uh, coach and uh, friend, Luandile Mohale. And professionally, she is uh, the founder of Lervesa Life Coaching and she's a transformation life coach, neuro-linguistic programming practitioner, negative emotional therapy practitioner, employee wellness consultant, and breathwork facilitator. And I thought Luandile is indeed the right person to, to discuss and provide us some tips um, about grieving and, and, and about how, how to heal or, uh, when, when you have traumatic experiences in life. Uh, welcome, uh, Luandile. I'm so happy uh, to have you. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasant honor. <laughs> yeah. And we are also now uh, having the, the, the Youth Day. Uh, in, in South Africa, we, we celebrate every year, 16th of June, we celebrate uh, Youth Day in order to commemorate and to honor the um, Soweto uprising, which, which was in 1976, uh, where a lot of um, school children uh, lost their lives and it was a very tragic um, e event. And, and not just one event, uh, but the events in, 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 in June 1976. And um, I'd like us to just to, to honor the day, uh, uh, this day, and, and, and start from that. Wandila, what does this Youth Day what does it mean to you as a South African? So Wandile is based in South Africa in Polokwane. So, so that's uh, why I'm asking her uh, um, uh, about this South African uh, day. You know, I think uh, Youth Day is extremely important to, for everyone to actually step back and just honor the day as it had happened so many years ago. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing for us to remember is that this is a time where one discovers who they are without being imposed on. And this we actually see in the revolution of 1976 in what happened, that they did not want the education of being taught in Africans imposed on them. Because now when you are at that age, you are carving your path. And when you are carving your path and you're trying to discover who you are being imposed on, it actually works almost as a conflict against what you're trying to work with. So that revolt is actually the, 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 the pinnacle of what being a youth is in trying to figure yourself, trying to find your place in the world and allowing that transition to happen in a way that there isn't oppression and uh, an imposition that works against who you are. So that for me is the most important thing that we can take from the youth of 1976. And I think from the journey from 76 until now in 2021, it has been diluted with the conflict of not being sure of who we are, where we belong in this democracy, how the youth can find their footing. And some have actually done very well, but there is still the majority that are still trying to find their place and their voice. And this is now the time where uh, taking a stand and standing firm to say, okay, I believe in this cause. How about we all join together really against, really against the oppression and the imposition to find our place in the world. Mm. Mm. So yeah, yeah. So 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 it, it, it's a it's a it's a common ongoing uh, um, yeah. thing in 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 that age uh, where you where you really um, wanting to uh, your own identity is forming and yeah. and and the choices are being made and how supportive the environment exactly. is. Um, and then if not, there, there is also that um, 
one the conflict, one, the yes. conflict yeah and that was that that was um, then those times that the conflict became uh, uh, so big and, and the way it was managed uh, violently managed uh, mm. that was the thing thank you for sharing i think this is also the different generations in south africa um, might have um, you know their own flavor uh, uh, how they how they honor and, and, and remember that obviously I mean uh, those who may be um, uh, a little bit older than us who who were part of it um, then it's 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 a uh, even a like a um, more more personal experience true yeah so now we wanted to today uh, focus on the the grief and the, the trauma and the healing and like partially in general, but now that we are uh, um, in June and, and, and commemorating the Youth Day, um, we can look at it also from that perspective. And also we are still uh, um, under the global pandemic, uh, the COVID-19, which many, many people have um, lost their loved ones or lost something, lost maybe their income or something, what they are craving or what has been a traumatic experience for them. So I'd always like to start um, uh, these recipes uh, for resilience from the more personal story, because I think that is how, how we can really learn uh, from each other's experiences. So Luandile, what kind of challenges have you had in life and and then what were the recipes let's say the three most important strategies or recipes how you overcame those challenges you know i can go back to um when i was nine years old um i it was christmas christmas eve i was visiting my grandmother and that day i decided to go to my aunt's house and on the christmas eve unexpectedly she fell ill and she was taken to hospital at night and in the morning she passed on so it was an unexpected death and at age nine that's that was my first encounter with death so the emotional management on my side was extremely poor so that for me it actually took me the longest to actually overcome but uh, one of the things that as I was growing up and it, it was excruciatingly uh, painful around Christmas because now I lingered too and I held on too much on the loss. I didn't know how to let go. I, I hung on for too long without letting go. So for that became a pattern of how to deal with things. And for me, that was extremely toxic. And that actually led to an accumulation of emotional baggage that I didn't know how to discharge that became extremely tumultuous when I was a teenager. So when that became an overload, I think I was around what, 16, 17, I became, I was actually functionally depressed. And with that depression, it led to so, uh, was this suicide attempts? I had two suicide attempts. I didn't succeed. But what I had, what I had managed to do after that, is try to overcome everything else and try to manage my emotions better. So that became my journey of self discovery as I went after high school and things like that. So that is psychology. So that helped me to tap into a well of the of trying to get well how do i manage how do i cope and i found out a world that i was not exposed to so that allowed me to deal with things better do the work and i think the most painful thing about the journey of mental health emotional management and mastery and everything like that and everything else just life happening and how to balance it all the most difficult part is knowing that the work is up to you. So when the work is up to you, you sort of like, hang on, I don't want to deal with this. And unfortunately, you have to because all of it is within you to be able to process it. So the self-accountability of knowing that I'm up to myself for me to be okay, 
then that helped me propel the journey of where I am. So with that journey, uh, fast forward to 25, I had another experience with death where my maternal grandmother, when she passed on, we were in the same room. So just minutes before she passed on, we were actually talking to her. So that for me was a different experience with death. Mm -hmm. And I found that experience so beautiful in the sense that it liberated the the freedom of what death is. It debunked the mystery and fear of death in the sense that Mm. it can be peaceful. I experienced it to be peaceful this time. And I experienced it to a point where I was able to let go because I had seen the suffering that she had gone through. She died of cancer. And I had been through her journey with her as she was dealing and coming to terms with her cancer until unfortunately she passed on. And for me, that was an experience that actually liberated me in how I managed uh, my emotions in terms of her grief, in terms of loss, in terms of allowing things to come and go and be in the moment. Because when it happened, I allowed myself to be in the moment. And that moment didn't take anything away from it. There was life that I enjoyed with her. Unfortunately, she's gone and that moment has come and I'm allowing it for me to process it and let go of it. So part of the that is that the most resilient part of the journey of it all is being present, knowing that in this moment, this is who I am. This is what I'm going through. I will not resist what I'm going through because if I resist it, it will persist. And I've learned that earlier on that it persisted in a way that it was uncomfortable and toxic in a way that it almost took part of who I was meant to be in the world. So for me, reframing the perspective of those two experiences for me has actually built a journey of liberated uh, life enjoyment in a way that even when things happen, I know that in this moment, I am me and everything else and all the emotions that I'm experiencing if I am able to allow myself to process them and let them go and release them, I'll be okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so did I get it right that, um, so obviously the nine years old, indeed the the maturity and and such a sudden thing, and you were probably very close to your aunt. uh, And and that's why it was so shocking and, 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 you know, uh, uh, sudden and and then affected uh, um, even your youth and, and, and all that. And then, then you chose to study psychology, so you got a little bit of tools to yeah. to, to to process, empower, myself, yes. empower yourself. So, so like knowledge, and then also like how you applied them, uh, uh, yeah. because isn't it knowledge often is just twenty percentage. It is actually yeah. the applying action. and exercising and a- actioning that knowledge and doing what it takes to 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 because you said. Uh, um, to be present so it, it, it's to sort of to really embody and and to mm. to to tune in and and to 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 listen to yourself and those emotions even to recognize the emotions I think that's often yeah. where where I see uh, my clients and myself even if, if you know um, anxiety takes over uh, and and you start being in your head uh, it yeah. just it just goes uh, spirals like uh, further down <laughs> the, that negative emotion and if you can yeah, so- pause and and recognize it now you can you can uh, release it yeah so actually what you're saying is actually spot on because it happened at nine and I was too much in my head and it spiraled from a small ball into a big mountain that I cannot handle yeah. and now it became a pattern of just uh, uh, sort of like behavior patterns. It became into choices and it now came into a point where there was no accountability of, okay, yeah. now I'm holding on for too long than I actually shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. And it, uh, thank you so much, uh, Luandela, uh, uh, sharing your like a, a very personal uh, experience um, of, of grief and, 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 and negative emotions and where it can lead. And then, then, then the journey 
to to actually to recover and to heal and 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 so forth. So it's it it must be something uh, uh, behind your passion to to help other people to transform um, uh, your your personal experience. And 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 or am I right? Is it your is it is 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 that where your power comes from? I think so. I think uh, for the longest time, I, I was, I've, I've always wondered, what's my calling? What's my passion? What's my calling? What's my passion? And I actually realized that, hang on, everything that I've been through, everything I've actually been through and the journey that I took it one step further as I got older is that when I went for life coaching um, and I actually realized, hang on, this is actually where my passion lies because mm. everything else that I had been through and everything else that I was seeking the solution to, I can actually help other people overcome what I actually was able to overcome. So the passion of the work that I do is everything that I was able to uh, overcome and empower myself with. And yeah. the, the most powerful thing was coming back to my body through breath coming back to my body in a way that I allow my body to be a safe space. And it was through the power of the work with Breathwork Africa that I, I was actually uh, privileged to find that, to actually reaffirm that the power of every else that I've actually ever seeked is within myself and within my breath. And in that it was a full circle moment for me in uh, how I experienced my grandmother's last breath as she passed on mm. and how I recharge myself with every breath that I take, that the life force of breath is actually what all that I need to come back to my body, come back home to self in who I am, recharge, and let go and through that I have allowed myself to build uh, my business I've allowed myself to build myself in a way that I've overcome uh, the limitations that I've ever put on myself mm. I wasn't uh, too uh, what's that word I was never really active growing up and I actually found my power through exercise and before COVID last year, I ran my first 10 case. And before all of that, and before my transformational process, you couldn't, I couldn't run a hundred meters. 400 was too much. Running 10 kilometers for me, I had felt like I had reached the pinnacle. And the discovery of training for that 10K was something that allowed me to hang on, overcome every possible limitation I could ever have on myself. Yes. And that helped me with the goal setting, the goal, uh, value, uh, what's this, reevaluating my goals and chunking them out. And everything else that I was experiencing it in my physical part, I was able to apply it in my work, in myself and, and in how I do everything. And I actually found that reframing life changing the perspective on everything else, it actually helps you to build better yeah. and changing the surrounding of where you are into everything else that you can ever imagine for yourself. Because if you don't see it, if you don't imagine it and see it possibly first here, you can never actually have it here. Yeah, in yeah. The and uh, exactly. So that's, that's also in the in the positive intelligence uh, um, uh, program that I'm 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 I'm, I'm starting um, is is really to catch all those um, negative or self judging uh, or judging others or the circumstances those inner critic very powerful um, disturbing uh, uh, thoughts to be able to catch them and then. Uh, use your mental fitness muscle uh, and, 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 and pause and choose to think positively right. instead. Choose the opportunity, uh, which yeah. you, unknown opportunity. Who knows, it might even be a gift 
uh, yeah. in, in the future. Some of the adverse experiences, some of the very, very tough uh, challenges that you are going through. Though, if we are talking about grief, I think that if, if you just lose a loved one, uh, it, it's, it's um, because it's based not on fear. Your grief is not necessarily based on fear, but it's actually based on the love. And, and, and that you lost the person that you loved. I mean, obviously there can be also like now the pandemic, so it's, 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 it's combined with, with fear or anxiety or, or you know, negative emotions. Um, how, I want us to move now uh, into, into our coach roles also more. Um, what have you seen um, now generally um, the trauma, um, grief, trauma to, to where, where are we as people? And, and I'm even saying so we are starting from the youth day and, and, and we are living now in, in the pandemic. So it's, it's like looking into even things that are transgenerational versus our current experience. So how do you see this, these things affecting uh, our community and our clients? I think the pandemic has allowed people to quiet down. So all those other elements of uh, the activities that they used to escape issues that the, they had to deal with had now paused. We couldn't go anywhere and we couldn't self-destruct in a way that does not allow us to be here and to be present. So with that, it has actually brought a lot of overwhelming emotions for a lot of people and the outlet of dealing with them and loss of income through the lockdown and mm -hmm. all of that, it, it became too much. And we're in a household where you have young kids that are in school and you your business is not as functional as it used to be. And now you have income adjustments, it can become extremely overwhelming. And now you are in each other's spaces. No one can escape those spaces. So everything else that you people had to be dealing with, it became an overload. Mm -hmm. So that outlet became traumatic for some of the people that were under lockdown with in their households because now the element of uh, a positive outlet of release is not there. Some don't know how to manage their emotions and some don't know how to release and restore. So that became toxic. You saw the, the, the spike in the GBV stats mm, and- Gender-based violence, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, the, the suicides. Mm -hmm. And just also the fear of dealing with the pandemic. So for, for people that haven't um, allowed themselves to see death differently, they fear the death knocking on their doors. And also just being out of the house, trying to make a living, you can come back test, test positive and you don't know what the future holds there. So that, that was, it's just a double edged sword that we are just functioning with right now. Yeah, yeah. So the going back to basics of how, how do I, how do I, how do I, becomes extremely emotional for a lot of people. So that the, 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 and the, the deaths that some have actually endured because some households have lost more than one sibling or a father, like parent, like they've lost multiple family members due to the pandemic. So that in its own, it, 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 it's another dynamic of the trauma of it all, not just the pandemic, but the trauma of maybe the generational trauma, like you said, uh, in terms of everything that they were dealing with from childhood trauma, adolescent trauma, uh, young adult trauma, and now maybe they're in their late 50s or 60s, they haven't dealt with the childhood trauma. So the burden of it all, it, 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 it spills over to the people that are next to you. And often we become too toxic for each other to cope with in a way that we don't know how to build and restore. So often we distract them to restore. 
So yeah. all of that, it has been overly um, exhausting for, 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 for a lot of people. And it feels like, when does it stop? Yeah. And with the legacy of Youth Day and apartheid 45 years after the 76 uprising, you see that not only is it the trauma, or, like you spoke about it earlier on, that for those that were in their youth in 76, it's personal because they were there, they experienced it. Mm -hmm. So the trauma of the apartheid legacy, the 76 uh, legacy, the post-apartheid legacy, mm -hmm. either maybe of employment or unemployment, and the COVID legacy that we are now in, it's too much to handle for some people. And also the emotional management not a lot of people know how to yeah. do that. Yeah. Not a lot of people know how to how to reach out or yeah. even start the conversation without judgment. Yeah, and we are often uh, um, well. I, I feel like I'm saying uh, we. I've, <laughs> I'm living in South Africa since 2005, so we. <laughs> yeah. But we. Um, yeah, the the the, the often uh, um, it's said that that we we sort problems with um, violence that or that we are very very violent uh, country yeah uh, do, do, do you do you because you were just talking like toxic behavior so toxic behavior is not just saying something rude it no. can indeed be um, abuse very mental financial um, mm. uh, sexual uh, you know physical yes. otherwise and uh, um, and it can take different, uh, really different forms. So, so, so you you are actually talking uh, the link between your personal trauma and and your personal self sabotaging thoughts and, and and inability to to actually to to process your emotions in a constructive and in a in a in a, in a you know in a safe space. Um, mm -hmm. without, uh, without um, um, getting into that toxic behavior. I think that's, yeah, that, that's, that's something that is super important. And this is not just a South African thing. It's just that now that we, we live in South Africa and we are talking about the youth day and the South African experience. But this is like, a, I'm even thinking in Finland and, and like in, in, in um, like my own experience looking at how transgenerational trauma because like my grandparents generations uh, were were in the war it, they 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 played part and they parents were part of the like the independence war and then there was the sec, you know the second world war and, mm -hmm. and and those traumatic experiences and and you know how they then if if they are not resolved if if it's not healed how they somehow pass it mm. on to the next generation. Yeah. There was no war then in my parents' generation, but they got hardship experiences because their parents were not well. And, and then uh, even, even my generation, you know, feels still mm. something from that one. If we do not heal at individual level, we cannot heal the community or mm. the country or the world. Um, but you are doing something exactly uh, um, to, to, to help people now um, on, 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 on this type of, um, in, to, to heal from the trauma. And uh, um, can, you, can you also tell a little bit about um, uh, your services um, and, and, and the different kind of services that you have? And, um, and especially if, if someone is now feeling that, that they are in, in that space, of, of, of very deep trauma and maybe even like feeling that uh, getting into a very bad uh, place and really need support. Yeah, so the multi-generational trauma spillover effect is actually what we are all experiencing at some level. And what happens is that when we are dealing with that, we don't know how to resolve that. And some are so afraid of resolving it because it actually causes conflict to resolve trauma and conflict. So they avoid the conflict, but actually 
the scar of it, the, the, the damage of it, it's spilled over in other relationships. So what one of my partners and I do is that, Mashudu, um, we have a, a masterclass that we host every month. And what we do in that masterclass, we actually equip um, the people that uh, sign up for the masterclass. It's, a, it's an online uh, course, workshop course mm. uh, over a period of 15 days. So we actually work through equipping the, the clients with the tools and we empower them on how to process, process grief. Uh, and, and and the trauma and equipping them with the with the necessary skills and tools, the motions of outlet, how to also restore and let go, because it's also important not only to process without restoring and letting go, because when you do not restore, it will recharge and recur. Mm. So that is the most important thing when you open up your heart space to let go of something or resolve something you need to recharge and restore it love before you let go of it yeah. so that way you always have allow allow yourself to come back to self with love mm-hmm. so that is one of the master class that we have and for the month of june um i'll tell you sorry the day The, we start on the 20th. The masterclass starts on the 20th of June for, for the month of June, yes. Okay, and so we can, we can put some uh, link uh, or email and, and address to, to, to the show notes so that those who yes. are interested, they can contact you and, uh, mm-hmm. and find out um, the, the details. So I still wanted to, maybe uh, one thing what uh, I think is always, um, because coaching, and uh, counseling and and psychotherapy and all that, they are sister professions, um, uh, uh, meaning there are certain overlapping areas. Uh, But is there any any advice that um, who who is in a right space to attend your program and who maybe maybe needs a health professional like a... Is, is, do you have any uh, guidance on that? You know, the, the, the guidance that I always give is, are you ready to do the work? Mm. If you are ready to do the work, then start. It doesn't matter where you start. You can start with journaling. You can start with allowing yourself to note the patterns. Mm. as and when you unfold and move through conflict and around conflict and how it's caused and what is happening what is the cycle of recurrence and also their ability to be accountable in the role that you play because honestly all the time we found we find people that allow themselves to to portray themselves as victims and not allow to themselves to see the role that they play yeah. Because, you know, in an argument between you and I, if it escalates to a certain level, then it means you and I actually played equal roles or in some degree, I was toxic to you as much as you were toxic mm. to me. Yeah. So that is the link of allowing yourself to see, okay, where am I in the space of healing? Where am I in the space of causing the trauma in other people? How accountable am I? How responsible am I? What am I willing to change? And if you're not willing to do the work, this is the kind of program where you have to do the work and resolve the conflict within self because all the triggers are still going to present themselves in life. But Mm -hmm. how you manage yourself after you've been triggered and how after you've experienced something how you react is the most important thing. So yeah. that is the choice and the role that you play in the being present in life yeah. and how you also discover yourself and your breath through your journey because mm-hmm. everything else lies in our breath. Yeah. So, so when you say conflict, when you say conflict, you are indeed uh, referring to the inner conflict. Yes. Yes. In, in this context now that we that you yes, were in this context, so yes. that 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 inside 
very uncomfortable, very unpleasant uh, 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 a sp a space where, where, yeah. And and Rwandila, uh, I'm I'm just in Rwandila has uh, I have worked on a in in a conflict of mine uh, with uh, Rwandila, and uh, I think you you were using the NLP. Uh, type of um, and or combined things, combined <laughs> tools from your from your toolbox, and um, but going going like uh, more into the really to the the uh, emotional therapy and 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 the neuro linguistic uh, programming type of a thing, and and uh, yeah, it it requires self work uh, and honesty and authenticity yeah. and trusting your coach. Um, so you can't just go and, and, and tell your coach that, okay, no, come on, I'm here, sort my issues. <laughs> but you need to be, so it's an extremely important point. You need to be ready and willing to do the work and the coach will be there to guide you and to support you and maybe to challenge you and whatever uh, other uh, uh, techniques are needed. But I, yes, that's very, very important. And if you do not solve it, you can carry it indeed um, until you, you can go to your grave with your inner conflicts and your negative thoughts and, and, and uh, self-sabotage and your trauma. And why should you do that? Because- yeah, and, and, and when that's done, you actually are blaming other people. Yeah, Paulina, it's you. You're the reason why I'm like this. Yeah, 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 blaming others. Yeah. Um, yeah, very common, um, uh, if not blaming mm, yourself true. or even blaming yourself, but blaming even others. And like, mm. I, I love this. And I think this was, this has been a big part of my, uh, my own growth journey. Also, mm -hmm. blaming circumstances. Yeah, <laughs> that was very, that was my life. That was my life. Yeah. Blame so, everything but me yeah. and the role that I had to play. Yeah, so so it extremely like, and then if, if 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 like you explained your your story, how you could actually to let it go and 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 to heal and and get free, like get yeah. free of that, it's it's like a cage. It is, eh? and you know another thing of another way of seeing this is that we are able to spot bullies from a mile away, and yeah. we are able to spot. Uh, certain things that people are doing that are uncomfortable to others and things like that. And we never actually think about how we actually bully ourselves. Yeah. And it starts from here. And the conversations that we have in us, with yeah. ourselves. And if we are not gentle enough with ourselves, but we expect other people to be gentle with us, yeah. how is it that the things that we are not comfortable with within ourselves we are expecting from others yeah. because the saying that how you allow others others to treat you is how you see yourself so if we come back to the concept of self-love and the concept of knowing who i am in myself there is no way that i will allow you to speak to me in any way that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. So that's the whole empowerment, uh, like like yeah. confidence building, and you know, cleaning up your. You know, it's a spring cleaning. <laughs> yeah. It's not only spring cleaning, like a major renovation <laughs> and rehabilitation yeah. Uh, yeah. type of a thing of love um, and kindness. Yes, indeed, indeed. And um, okay, I wanted to to let's. We've been talking about you've given us so many tips. But if you need it to just like uh, really to give like three biggest tips uh, or best tips now, like if, if someone wants to immediately start practicing something. So let's try to bottom line. What would be your recommendation for someone who is in that uh, in a conflict or, you know, have had a very traumatic uh, experience and is grieving or, or just is in a in a bad place? What is those kind of tips that they can start practicing right away. What, what do you think is the best be recipe? Be present. Be present in everything that is going on. It doesn't matter what it is. Be present. And once you're able to be present and not overthink the circumstance of what happened, you will be able to trace and reconnect with yourself through your breath. 
And when you do that, your breath will not overwhelm you and will, it will not move in a speed that actually over carries you in place where you are not ready to be yet. Even if you're dealing with loss right now in terms of loss of income, loss of a loved one, loss of your home, loss of your business, and anything else that it could actually be. Allow yourself to take it one breath at a time, one day at a time. And the resolution of it all and the clarity of it all in terms of how you move on will actually come in the moments of stillness. So when you're quiet and you're still, do not actually suppress the emotions as they come. Allow them to come, process them, and know that they are feelings and emotions that will be there in the moment. You are also have the ability to exhale them out and let them go out of that moment. And that way, in anything that you're going through, you don't overpower yourself with future moments that have not happened. Yeah. The moment of now, as it is happening, will actually allow to you to carry yourself to the destination of wherever you're going. So the one step at a time and the one breath at a time will actually able to carry you through whatever that you're going through. It might seem like I'm downplaying it, but it's the most powerful thing. I've actually lived through it in terms of one step at a time, one day at a time, one breath at a time. And I was able to resolve major, major conflict and major, major crisis that I've lived throughout in terms of being a balanced human being in a way that everything else as it comes and as it, it's challenging as it can be, I cry. And after I cry, I let it go. And as I let it go, I am able to figure out something else in a moment of a foggy, heated moment of either unclear or a plan that didn't work out as I had hoped it would. And you know, even business for us as coaches in this time, it's challenging mm. because clients want to actually resolve the conflict, but they've lost their income. Yeah. 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 So, so in such a way, uh, thank you for, 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 for the, the, the this, um, this advice and, 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 and the step-by-step -step approach. I think it's super important and something that we can all try to implement. Uh, and, and then if possible, if need be, uh, reach out for for further support and you mentioned like that you have a group program um what other um like can you tell what other services Lervesa life coaching uh, uh, uh provides than than that uh, your partnership um program on on trauma and healing so i'm a life coach and with the life coach we i we me i balance it out with different modalities of healing. I do breath work. I am an employee wellness consultant. And within the life coaching space, I, I, I specialize in uh, negative emotional therapy mm. and um, neuro-linguistic. Uh, I'm also a neuro-linguistic practitioner. So that actually allows me and also I'm a transformational life coach. So I dabble in different modalities for my client. Mm. So the, the So do you do you do one on one? So you do one on one work if somebody wants to to have yes. a one on one coaching sessions, yes. uh, they can um, do, do you also provide the um, exploratory free exploratory uh, or discovery call just to see if you are matching or how yes. That is actually extremely important because onboarding in a client is extremely important. Like I said earlier on, if the client is not ready to do the work, unfortunately, I cannot onboard because uh, the relationship between a client and, and a coach, it's not one of rescue. Mm -hmm. it's, we have to work together. And if you're not willing to do the work and mm -hmm. you're not willing to go within and you're not a willing to be authentic and honest with yourself with everything else that you're going through unfortunately you will not re reach the desired intention with the work that you're trying to do yeah. so the setting out the intention as it starts it's not about a quick fix or a rescue but it's about work 
Yeah. And it's work within yourself that you need, one needs to be on a journey to, to be able to resolve. Yeah, yeah. And then how it can be, how it can be, all this work can be elevated with the, when you find the right coach and, and you yes. do it in a partnership uh, and you commit, you both commit uh, to, to, yes. um, to that partnership. Thank you so much, uh, Luandila. I think uh, we got uh, quite a bit of um, very good uh, advice and, and, and also to, to really to, to see that it is possible to, to even if you, you reach the bottom, uh, you, you like, like even having suicidal thoughts or, or otherwise in a, in a very, very bad place, you can recover you can yeah. heal and you yeah. can be happy whilst you are also successful. Imagine, imagine I had missed all of this. Imagine. <laughs> am I not glad I'm alive? I am. <laughs> so um, I'm going to put uh, uh, anyone uh, who has uh, listened and been with us today, please go um, to the show notes and, and if you want to get in touch with uh, Luandila, I'll put her uh, links to her uh, online, uh, online presence and, and, and you can then uh, take the discussions further. And uh, Luandila, uh, I think we, uh, we will continue our discussion, but for now, uh, we are leaving the listeners out. Uh, thank you so much.